Now, right there, give God the biggest praise. He's an awesome God. He's an amazing God. Come on, he's an incredible father. He's our provider. He's our king. He's my healer. Anybody got a testimony? He's my healer. He's my way maker. Come on. They say he's the bridge over troubled water. Come on. He's my heart fixer, my mind regulator. Lion of the con tribe of Judah. He's my God, my God, my God, my God. I love him, I love him, I love him. I can do nothing without him. And today somebody need to stir that up in their bellies. Today somebody need to release something in the atmosphere. You'll have what you say. You will have what you say. Come on, a new praise. I went to another place. A new sound. I went to another place. Come on. Not the same old, same old, same old. Tell your neighbor, God wants a new praise. Tell your neighbor. Say, God looks in for, he's looking for a new expression. God wants you to now release something brand new. It's a new day. Somebody say, it's a new day. It's a new day. My smile have changed. It's a new day. My dance have changed. It's a, my strive have changed. It's a new day. It's a, you'll have what you say. If you want to come into your next, you better open up your mouth. You'll have what you say. My day has changed. My life has changed. My circumstances have changed. They under my feet. I'm ruling and I'm reigning. I have more than enough. All my needs are met. All my debts are canceled. Are you kidding? My kids are delivered. My house is free. My marriage is functioning. I say you will have what you say. Stay there with your mouth closed. I decree things are coming to my house. People are running me down to bless me. People are looking for me to do business with me. My business are exploding. My bank account is overflowing. I'm living in the overflow. God is doing something great in my life. I say you will have what you say. Somebody say I'm the heel of the Lord. I'm the blessed of the Lord. Say I'm the head and never the tail. Say I'm above and never beneath. Say always rising, always ascending. Say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Say I'm walking in power. I'm walking in dominion. I'm walking in authority. Say today I rise. Today I live my best life, my blessed life. Say, I am blessed to be a blessing. Say, I'm blessed going in, I'm blessed coming out. Everywhere you put me, I am blessed. Somebody say, this working in my favor. What I got going on right now is about to work in my favor. Say, the report is coming back saying, I rise. I'm on top and I'm winning. I said you will have what you say. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open up your mouth in this place. Make the devil mad. Terrorize the enemy. My God, I'm wealthy. I'm wise. I'm prosperous. Woo! My God, he's an awesome God. Now we can say it. Say it. My God. Is a, here you go. He reigns, yeah, with will. My God, hey, our God, He's an awesome, yeah, He reigns with will, some power and love. Again, our God, how fast somebody tell them, our God. It's turning right now. Say it. Our God. Come on. It's getting better right there. Our God is an. Oh, my God. Tell somebody. Our God. Watch God do it. Tell them. Watch God do it. Our God is a. Tell them. Oh, it's getting better. Tell them. Our God. Hey. Watch. 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 Watch God. Hey. 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 Watch God. Our God. Watch God. He's an awesome God and he reigns. From heaven, our God. Tell them, watch God do it, our God. He's an awesome God and he reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Tell them, watch God, our God. He's awesome. He's working for me, turning it around.
for me working in my well-being he's my god and our god he's an awesome god he reigns from heaven above with wisdom power and love our god is an awesome man i love him put your hands together i think the atmosphere is just about ready for something supernatural to take place you got to put something in the atmosphere. You got to provoke heaven. I say you got to provoke heaven. You got to say, heaven, come down. Why? Because you are an air traffic controller. You begin to direct angels. Come on. Angels on assignment. Send them where you want them to go this morning. They are waiting for you to tell them where they got to go. Go to my house. Go on my street. Deliver my husband. Set my children free. Send them out today. Go on the highways and the byways. Snatch somebody's child out of danger. Get somebody free this morning. Woo! Tell your neighbor, say, don't mess with me. You don't understand. I'm a weapon in the earth. I'm a weapon. My tongue is that of a ready rider. Don't let me start going into the heavenlies on you. I tear up the earth. I cause things to shift on my behalf. Woo, my God. Okay, I'm going to preach in a few moments. But I feel the Lord stirring something in here. They said that song says, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Oh, I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. I got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Be all right. Y'all not saved. Y'all not saved. Y'all not saved. Come on, mothers. Come on. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Come on. That everything. Hey. Oh, the Holy Ghost. He told me everything's going to be all right. See, when you know it, you can do it. Hey. Everything. It's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Y'all believe it? It's going to be all right. Be all right. Be all right. Because I know the outcome. Say it. It's going to be all. Be all. Be all right. Oh, give God glory. I feel the Holy Ghost. I tell you, God's getting ready to do something amazing today. Because you got up. Because you woke up. You're in direct line for a breakthrough and a miracle. My breakthrough day is now. Come on. My miracle is now. God's turning some things in my favor. Now I'm expecting the call any moment. I'm looking. I'm leaning out in the spirit. I know things are coming back in my favor. Come on. I can feel God moving for me. I'm putting a praise on it now. You don't have to wait for it. Put a praise on it now. I already know I'm healed. I already know I'm free. I already know my mind. It's, I already know my children are going to be safe. I already know my marriage is going to be made up. God is moving in my house. We prophesy. The winds have changed. Say, not the same old, same old. Y'all better turn to somebody and say, not the same old, same old. Say, I'm looking for something new. I'm expecting something greater. Some of somebody say, I'm increasing, I'm expanding, and I'm enlarging. Say, I'm about to bust a move. Tell somebody, say, I'm busting out, I'm busting out, I'm busting out on the left. And on the, I'm busting out. You can't contain me. I'm, a, I'm busting out. I'm busting out. On the left. On the left. On the right. On the left. On the left. On the right. I'm busting out. On the left. On the right. On the left. On the left. On the left. I'm busting out. Y'all ain't ready. See, y'all not ready for that. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> on the left, we busting out. On the right, we busting out. Somebody say, no more containment. Ooh, say, I've been stuck too long, but this is my season. Say, I feel a bust out in me even this morning. Even the, don't, tell somebody, give me room. Give me room. I, I can feel me expanding. I'm growing while I'm standing here. God is increasing me. And then while I'm standing, give me room. I need about six feet. I'm busting out. Woo, I'm wealthy. 
I'm wise, I'm enlarging, and God is saying, it's now. Somebody say, it's now. Tell your neighbor, say, you'll have what you say. You will have what you say. Don't open up your mouth. That's why your life don't change. I'm opening up my mouth. Say that and look at me like I'm crazy. But we are operating in what is legal in God. He says you can decree a thing. He said you can decree a thing. And what? It shall be what? It shall be what? Do you know those are legal terms? Decreeing and establishing, it is legal, it's government. That means that God has made you an ambassador. That means God has given you the legal right to go and tell the enemy, <laughs> I decree I'm the heal of the Lord. I decree I'm the blessed of the Lord. I'm establishing healing. I'm establishing blessings. I'm establishing breakthrough in my life and in my house today. So you'll have what you say. Anybody feel blessed today? I feel blessed. I feel blessed. When things are going down, somebody say, I'm what? Leveling up. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up. Never to be the same. I received that word this morning. She's done fired me up like what? We going, what? we going, we doing that? Oh, 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 oh. We going to the next level. Dimensions, come on. God tells us we able to time travel. If you don't like what you live in, shift. If you don't like what you see, make them bust a move, bust a move. You got to get mad with the devil and say, I ain't being held here no more. I don't walked around, I don't cried over this 200 times. I don't sat in this place, come on, I'm not doing it. And I'm not waiting for you to do it for me. I decree and declare as an ambassador, I'm a legal agent. I have governmental, I decree and declare that you getting up out of my house, you let my children go. I decree and declare we are blessed. We have all our needs there. My bills are paid. I decree and declare. I'm enlarging. I'm increasing. I decree and declare. Woo! Yeah. You're not no church person. You're not no. I came to church. No, you walked into the embassy. This morning I wanted to go to church. No, you didn't. You came into the governmental headquarters. You better shift your mind. That's what she's saying. You better change your mind and know who you are in this hour and let every demon know who you know who you are, who serves in you, how you operate out of the kingdom of heaven. You too bad and you don't even know it. Because if you knew it, you would be sitting there looking sad. You, you'll know that the end results are already, already in your favor. Why? Because what you are living right now is what you prayed for yesterday. Why? Because the word is a preceding word. If you want to see your tomorrow work, oh, y'all not here, Lord help me. If you want to see your tomorrow better, Prophet Vicky, you better open up your mouth and send the word into tomorrow. You better send the word into next week because when you show up, you have already constructed what you want to see. I'm building my tomorrow with my mouth. I'm building my future with my mouth. I'm telling the devil next week I'm about to be, y'all, y'all help me, Jesus. I wish somebody really understood this. My God. I say what you're living right now is because of the prayers that was prayed yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If y'all understood how the realm works in the spirit, you wouldn't sit here looking at me. You'll be participating. You'll be saying, we building, we constructing, we moving. I'm in the embassy. If you ever want to understand government when you come into other nations and when you want to see the force of your nation back you up, when you get in trouble, everybody say, just get me to the embassy. Because if you can get me <laughs> into my governmental domain, then I'm not fighting by myself. My nation fight with me. You are the nation of Jesus Christ. You're not some little church that just got up this morning and said, you know, I think we want to go. You are force. You are governmental agents. You are weapons of mass. Oh, my God. You destroy the plans. You, you crush them up under your hand. You put them up under your feet. You are powerful. 
and don't let nobody tell you nothing different. We cast down old thoughts, old my. We break the frame that you've been boxed in that have made you believe you're not greater than what you're living in right now. Somebody say, I'm rising above all circumstances. Say, he's called me to rule and reign. Say, I'm taking my position. Say, I'm dominating in my domain. Say, I'm dominating in my domain. My God. Come on, get Roma. Stir it up in your belly. Come on, fan the flames of faith. Come on, believe it. It's happening now. It's happening now. We dominate in our domain. Thank you, Father. You've given us ability to legislate, overturn, overthrow overrule are y'all hearing me overturn overthrow and overrule welcome to the infancy of God whatever he has written in the Constitution of the Word of God you have legal right to everything that is written in the Constitution of the Word of God and if you do not pick up your constitutional law book and you begin to decree back into circumstances and situations it will never change because the enemy is confusing you with your authority of who you are he wants to use your legitimate authority come on to shut you down but when you understand who you are as an agent of change in the earth as a governmental official he says no I, listen the Jesus Christ took the keys of authority he went all the way to hell he took the keys and he came back and he gave them all to you you have keys now, I don't know about you but when you have keys you can unlock stuff and you can lock down stuff so that means he says I gave you keys because I've given you authority to do what to bind it's in the word to do what that means to lock it down they say lock it down. We lock it down. We lock down every agent of hell this morning. Every place that has tormented your mind. Everything the enemy made you believe between the night and you waking up to get here. That you weren't going to make it. You a survivor. If he could have done something to you, you wouldn't be here this morning. But God kept you to get up and give him praise. And every time you praise God, you're letting the enemy know who's winning. We're winning. We're on the winning team. Every time you praise God, he's reminded of the victory in the camp of the righteous. Every time you praise God, when you don't see nothing, you are releasing a sound bite that will terrorize the words and the walls that have stood to oppose you. Why? Because I got to praise. That's why they say, don't wait till the battle is over. Because I know the outcome. The outcome says what? We what? Anybody over here winners? I, I, I don't, you, are we winning? And if you had a real prayer life, you would praise God. If you had a real relationship with God, you would praise him. And the only reason why we can't praise him because we're not real sure. We're somewhere in between all the other gods and all the other voices. But when you leave all the other gods and you divorce them devils, them lying deities, those ancient spirits, when you begin to cut them off, bind them, put them under your feet, Tell them to shut up. You bound my granddaddy. You kept my grandmama. God, not him. My great grandma, my mama. But today I rise up with authority. I say I bind you and I loose the government of God in the earth to begin to move in Deerfield. Move right now on the streets, Father God. Every household, bring a visitation. Let heaven come to earth. Let heaven come to earth. Heaven. Heaven, heaven, government, authority, rule in the earth, in the earth, in the earth, in the earth, in the earth. Okay, let me, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. I thank God for all of y'all for getting up, having courage to put on something to get up and still have a heart to want to get into the house of the Lord. 
still have a heart to want to connect and feel a part of a body. You just don't want to sit home and watch. You are not one who's a spectator. You are a participator. You got up this morning and you said, I'm not waking up to spectate. I'm not looking at one more person get free and blessed and I not be a part of it. Come on. Whatever is happening that is expanding and enlarging and increasing, I'm right in it. Y'all not hearing me. I'm in the river in it. I'm in the wet of it. I'm in the now of it. I'm not on the side looking. Come on. This champion I'm a part of. I'm getting all that God said he promised me in this season. Somebody say, I'm a participator. Say, not a spectator. My praise is significant. Say, because I am a participator. Woo, Jesus. Say, no more the same. I made up my mind today. I'm going to have what I say. And I'm not saying anything any longer that God didn't say. Because of this constitution, I have legal right to overturn, to overthrow, to uproot, to destroy. And today, I exercise my government authority. Say, in the name of Jesus. Now, you got to get every demon situation in your mind's eye, like right in front of you, and talk to every Goliath. Every circumstance that's looking like it's bullying you, it's punking you, it's not going to happen. You got to get an attitude in your spirit and say, this deal is going through. I'm about to get my break. Say, it, they, this thing is working in my faith. Say, they coming back saying, approve. They coming back saying, oh, we made a mistake. You going to get more? Come on. My season of increase on my job. Somebody is about to promote me. Somebody's getting ready to see I'm in my season of greatness. I'm in my time of expansion. Somebody, God, I put my name in the atmosphere. People are picking me up at next level realms of authority and greatness and wealth. Somebody say, I'm moving up. I'm leveling up. I'm going higher. Woo! This is my season of more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. Say, I'm busting out. Say, no more containment. Say, I'm busting out. Okay, I love the Lord. I thank God for y'all this morning. But I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the power of God stirring in here. I tell you, sometimes you can't break the momentum. You can't break it in the spirit. Because I feel God's moving right now. Can I just give y'all the word right now? I thank everybody. God bless you where you came from. They say thank you that you came to Jesus. People proclaim we are this unusual church that has been called up radically to bring a change in the earth. And we're not doing church as usual. Tell your neighbor, say, you came in here. I want y'all to start getting excited, Jesus People Nation. I want you to start knowing that on your road, you can decree, you can declare. Everything on this road is getting free. You should come in here and start praying. Release angels, 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 angels. Angels are here this morning. They're coming to bring miracles. You may have come in one way, but you're going out different. If you sat on my row, you getting delivered. If you sat next to me, you getting your break. Y'all not hearing me. We got prayer warriors in here. These people know how to pray. We have been standing for 24 years with people in here that have prayed us against every dragon, every demon, witches and warlocks who tried to stop us and block us. We got prophets, ministers, pastors. Come on. We got weapons of mass destruction. People who are Jesus people that we rise up and we war and we war and we war. You have no idea that you was coming into a breakthrough service. You, have, you don't ever know when God's getting ready to deliver. You got to be ready. Be ye always ready. Tell your neighbor, say, you're going home changed today. You get ready. Say, you're going home different. God's going to go deep. He's going to uproot some things today. Say, this is your day. Uh-uh. You got to get this stuff uprooted. You can't live another moment like this. Not on our watch. Say, not another day. You're not being depressed another day. You're not walking in heaviness another day. Not another day. Come on, warriors. Not another day. We gonna have what we say. We say you are free. We say whom the sun sets free is free indeed. We call you delivered. We call you free. We call you whole. We call you wealthy. We call you wise. We call you debt free. We call you victory. Somebody say victory.
Victory! 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 Oh! 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 Victory! 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 Oh! 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 Come out tears up! Oh! Oh! Show them! Victory! 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 Say it! Oh! 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 Say I am free! 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 Say victory! 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 Say victory, 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 victory. Say I am free, 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 come on, victory, victory. Victory! 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 You will have what you say. You are freeing stuff right now. And the reason why the deal going to show up this week is because you spoke it right now. The reason why the children coming back home and saying, Mama and Daddy, please forgive me. I'd lift my hands. I'm ready to live for God is because you said it right now. The reason why the debts are getting ready to be canceled and paid off. The reason why your bank account is about to change. The reason why your mortgage is about to be paid off. The reason why you are moving from where you have lived to your next is because I said it right now. The reason why I'm walking and healing, my back pain is gone. Come on. My headache is gone. Come on. My knee pain is gone. Why? Because I'm saying it right now. I decree and declare, go. Sickness, go. Come on. Back pain, knee pain, feet pain, head pain, joint pain. I say, go. Liver, be healed. Liver, be healed. Lungs, be healed. I decree and declare the blood over my body. And I say, I'm the whole of the Lord. We curse tumors right here in this atmosphere. We curse it. We curse tumors. We come against tumors. We break it off of you. We say you are now no longer living up under the blood sucking tumors. Every fibroid we curse, every tumor, every tumor, every tumor. We command you to go out of the bodies of God's people. Father, we thank you and we give you honor and glory. Wherever you're feeling pain, put your hand on it right now. Put your hand on it right now. Angels of the Lord are here and they're bringing healing. The Lord is gonna do it right now. You're gonna have what you say because you've directed angels. So Father, we thank you right now. Migraines, I call out migraines. Father, I thank you right now for every chemical imbalance that is in the bodies of your people right now. I'm calling you, lift your hands. God is moving. The angels of the Lord are moving right now. I speak that your systems come into alignment. You are kingdom citizen. It is illegal for you to be bound in sickness. It's illegal. I said it's illegal. According to the constitution of the word of God, by his stripes you are healed. That means it's preaching. You're already healed. When it shows up, you got to tell your body the symptom. Nah, I'm already healed. So I serve notice on you to go. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak right now over the immune systems. We prophesy, come on, strength to your immunity. We bind, we block, we insulate you and isolate you from this COVID, from this whole virus, the pathogens that are being released. 
even in the airwaves, come on, we put a shield of protection over you, over your house, over your children. Everything called to you, everything assigned to you. Not on my street. My neighbors are about to get victory and get blessed just because they're my neighbors. Because everything on my street is about to be insulated from hurt, harm, danger, famine, sickness, and disease. Come on, we say it right now. We say it right now. So when things show up, we know what we pray today. That is isolating our house, insulating us from all the hurt. We bind boomerangs in the spirit. Come on. You're not coming back. We're going higher. When the enemy tries to find you in this season, he won't find you because you already bust a move. You've already moved to another place in the realms of the spirit. We are the whole of the Lord. We are the health. We decree our bodies to function. We say to our biology, line up. We speak to the neurology. We speak to our minds. Come on, we speak. We bind lunatic spirits. We come against the spirit of fear that will try to mentally break us down. Come on, not this season. No, 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 I don't care what they do. We're standing strong in Christ. Come on, we fortify our minds with the blood, with the blood on the gates, on the walls. We thank you, Father, that your word, Father God, builds a gate around our minds. Somebody need to be praying. We know what the enemy is trying to bring. But we say what we want to see because tomorrow it ain't happening. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you that you're covering our minds. We come against every place emotionally in our soul where we feel overwhelmed and bombarded. Father, we give these things to you. And today we let go. And we say we are free. We are free. And we thank you for the victory today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now just one more time, put your hands together and give God some praise. Give him your real victory. Come on. It's like your favorite team. Come on. We just won the championship. You just got your ring. Come on. You just signed your billion dollar contract. Praise God like you holding it in your hand. Praise God like your children are free. Praise God like you got the report back saying I am healed. No surgery. Come on. No more sickness. It's never coming back. Praise God today like you are standing in your now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We give you honor and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Am I on? I know we have announcements, things we're going to show, but if you give me a few moments, I want to speak in this atmosphere that has already been charged. I want you to know this morning, we thank you for the word. We thank you for the word that's active and alive right now. And we thank you that the word goes out and it shall not be come back void. And it should accomplish what you've said it to do. And Father, what you put on my heart to share prophetically, Father God, it be a voice piece and an oracle of your truth and your revelation. I thank you today that the people that are here are ready to hear. Their ears are engaged. And Father, we don't show up <coughs> to just be those that have tickling ears. But we show up to be active listeners, that we might apply that what you're saying today, that we may see the word in action. We may see the manifestation of what you've said in our constitution be lived out in our daily lives. Even as we've decreed things this morning, we thank you, Father God, that we've spoken it, now manifest it, now do. We stand in faith, believing you, and we won't back down until we see the full promise. We won't stop until that which you said has been already set in the earth. We believe, therefore we receive, and we give you honor and glory now for victory. In Jesus' name, say amen. 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 You know, he's been talking to me, the Lord's been speaking to me a lot about preparation. Say preparation. preparation. God's been giving me dreams and visions and talking to me about end times and about things that are coming and what we need to get ourselves prepared for. And when we don't understand that if we're talking about being spirit people, being people who are supernatural agents, being people who serve a spirit God, God never does anything that he does not give us the ability to prepare ourselves for. Because God didn't set you up to fail, but he set you up to succeed. Amen? Somebody say, I was born to succeed. God set you up to succeed. And the reason why he employed 
prophets is because some people stop ascending. Some people stop sacrificing. Some people stop doing what they needed to do to become part of what God needs them to hear, to keep creation and everything working and flowing together. God created everything, and he had you in mind. Amen. It's nothing that was created by God that was not created for you to benefit from. Everything was created for you to benefit from. And that's why he says, no matter even if you see things not functioning the way he said, he said, call it back to true identity. Because the identity of God, the spirit of God, the DNA of Christ is in everything that we see in the earth that he created. It wouldn't have been if that it didn't hear the voice print of God that gave it its origin. When he called the thing what it was, he put in it the spirit to perform what he said. Y'all not hearing me? Your name means something. And I'm going to give you some homework. I want everybody to go home today, and I want you to go and do a research of your name. I want you to understand why you were named what you named and what God is saying concerning you. What did he speak, even from your parents and what they was talking? Because sometimes we're living up under, perhaps, a name, a title, or what people spoke over us and said concerning us that has limited us from walking into the best that God said. And that's why when you get saved, you make an exchange. Yeah. You take off the old identity and you step into a new place. He said, let's make an exchange. That's what we do when we go into the mountains. When we are ascending in God and God is saying, come up, he's trying to now take off things that have laden you and help you burden or put you in a place of a false identity that's no longer God says who you are. You have a new name. That's why we say written in glory. When you get born again, you come into a new identity. You are adopted in the beloved. You are, we saw a movie Friday night. Some of us was in here crying. It was such a great movie. And thank all of you guys for coming out. And thank you, Neat, and her team and her agency that she works with that was able to give us the preview of this movie that doesn't hit into the, um, it doesn't go into the box. I think it starts July, maybe 5th or something, or 4th. It goes into the theaters. But we had an opportunity to come out and view this movie because this movie was about a town in Texas. It was like this, this city in Texas, and it was called Possum. Possum trout? Possum trout. And the whole thing about the movie was that the people were able to come together in a church setting or church community by a bishop whose wife had a heart to stop some of the things that was happening over the generation of children to break the curse of them not having places to be loved, places to be a part, places to feel that they were secure. And she had a vision, and God dealt with her, and she told her husband, we got to adopt some children. And when she told her husband she has to adopt children, he wasn't with it at first, but he came along and he said, okay. When, by the time he came into agreement and they got these kids, these kids they got had gone through trauma. When you know when you are not a part of a family or community, if you're not a part of a support system somewhere, you are left uncovered. And that's why it's not just good for you to walk around and say, I believe in Christ right? And God have set an administration up out of his government to be able to help supply you and give you what you need. And then you say, well, I don't want to be a part of the government, right? So then we go AWOL. Now in the government, they call it AWOL. It's like we have set things for you to benefit you, to bless you with out of the government of God, which is the word of God. And when you say, I don't want it, you become like sometimes like, like orphanages, like, like orphans, right? You have separated yourself because you made a decision to separate yourself and not come into the family of God. God said, I'll give you a new family. He doesn't want one left out. He said, I'm going to load you with benefits and bless you. And what mama, daddy, uncle, cousin, sometimes family in the natural could not do, he gives you a supernatural family. That supernatural family have in them the love of God that is able to extend to you what is needed from your heavenly father. That he says, go give your sister a hug. Go give your brother a word of encouragement. Why? Because I brought you into a new family. And some of us did not have that growing up. But this movie was all about being able to be a part of a community that came together. And when they came together, they shut down the whole system of foster 
You know, when you're in a foster program and people are in different type of dire needs and they can't seem to get because sometimes the systems of the world, of course, is not working like the system of God and it's not set to do those things for you. It's not going to fill everything. It's not going to do everything. And so what happened is that sometimes they were under, when they was looking at these kids, they were sleeping on the seats and on the benches. And it's true because I've dealt with many kids that we ourselves have had to take in and take care of and all over nations and places I've gone to preach. I've adopted kids. I have kids in the Philippines that I've adopted. I have people that I take care of, kids that I am a part of a program called Compassion. And in that program, we take care of kids in Africa. I'm working to get my own village. And so why? Because you can do something. You can do something. And so when we saw the movie and I was thinking about it and how these people had gone through, they began to sacrifice their comforts. They began to say, I can. Not I can't, but I can take care of a child and help a child get a home and help a child get better and help a child find that they have a family. Why? Because they are us and they represent the continuation of what is next. And when I stop caring and loving for people, then I stop what God is moving in the earth to get accomplished by his spirit because you are the agents, you are the portals. You are the only thing that can bring the full heaven into the earth through me. And when the enemy tries to stop human beings and children from having identity and destiny, it is important for you to know that you have been the one that God rescued and put you in a good, stable place in salvation for you to grab a hand and bring somebody else's out, someone else out. And so as we look at life and all the things that are happening all around us, God is trying to bring us to a place of oneness. Say oneness. oneness. He's wanting to make us understand that we may be good by ourselves, but we are great together. Your whole role is significant. The person that came and you can say, I don't know them. But naturally, a lot of times naturally, we're looking to love what we naturally don't have ability to love because we don't have natural love to love people that are not a part of what we was naturally raised with. Even if it's crazy, we can still love it because it's a part of the natural human experience. But God said in order to become a family, in order to understand who you are in Christ and take this in and not run out the door, but take a moment and hug and touch Take a moment and say, you okay. Take a moment to pray while you're here. Like she was saying, we're going to another place. It's not the same old, same old. What you did yesterday, I'm not going to hold you to that because I recognize that I'm a person that's capable of making mistakes. So forgiveness is powerful. And so why? It sets you back in right order like you've never done anything. And the love and the Christ comes and cover you and puts you in place. Anyway, this whole town and this church of community of people wasn't a big church. They was just a church that made up in their mind they was going to do what God wanted. They was a church that got sick and tired of being sick and tired and said, if we don't recover the next generation, if we don't do something to put our hands out to reach our neighbors, then it's going to be on our watch that we pray and say we love God and we did nothing to work what we said we believed in. They got sick and tired. So it is a true story how they went and gathered together and came together and they adopted all the kids in the foster care program. By the time they came back to get more kids, the lady who was over the agency said to them, she said, there's not one kid left. A hundred, what was it, a hundred yards radius? A hundred miles radius that is without a home. Somebody say that's powerful. That's unity. That's community. That's shutting down. So y'all not even clapping. Y'all just need to listen. You got to be grateful. I could have been left up under the bridge. I could have been left without any hope having anything. But somebody saw me and took me in to take care of me. Why am I saying that? Because God is wanting us to know this morning as he was speaking to me. He says, he says we shout and we jump and we talk about the things that are successful. Like we, we're ready for success. Like we're ready for success. And he says, but, but in order for you to have success that God wants you to have, you got to understand what you need to prepare for in order for it to come. And so these people who was looking at these children, do you know the Bible teaches us find a hurt and heal it, find a need and fill it. Every time you are making yourself available to meet the need of somebody, God meets something supernaturally for you. Those people who thought they had not enough had more than enough. Why? Because they took in children that God makes sure is supplied for people God will take care of on the earth. Not one hair on your head is going without being counted and understood and noted in heaven. He is your supplier. God is your protector. God is your provider. He's going to make sure you have your needs met. Somebody say, God's going to do it. So a lot of times we are, uh, he told me, he said, in order for us to become really successful in life, 
We got to become completely prepared. Say prepared. prepared. You got to be prepared for the next generation. They're coming. You got to be prepared for what is happening. It's happening. You got to be prepared. They're created. Uh, we start going into computer systems when they start building it. It was 1970-something. They start preparing for what they had already mapped out that was getting ready to move on the calendar of things that was happening in the earth. They start now saying we better prepare because what we are tracking and tracing and the speed of how things are moving, we better run ahead and put something in place because it's a dangerous thing for things to show up and you have nothing in place or you're not prepared to handle what you are asking for. And so they're saying, listen, if we're going to keep feeding people and people are going to keep populating and people are going to keep having children, we got to put something in the earth to make sure we are able to sustain people who keep coming. Are y'all with me? Yes. Things that keep happening. So they're saying that it's a lot of times that we are asking God to do things and we want to be successful, but guys, we're not prepared. Ask somebody to say, are you prepared for your next? Are you for your next? Say, are you prepared for the vision to come to pass? Look how low y'all are. Y'all so low. Are you prepared? Are you prepared for what you've been praying for? Are you prepared for what you've been asking for? Why? Because we're in the moment of activity. We're in the moment of things coming alive and happening. Why? Because he said when you was coming to an end, you were coming to a beginning. And when God starts announcing prophetically ends and beginnings, he's telling you measure now what you are coming from so you can know how it measure more for where you're going. So that means if you're walking into increase, you're going to have to measure more. Why? Because I have on my mind people that I got to bless. Y'all yes. not here. God is not blessing you just for you. We are able to get more because we are extending God's service of resources. Why? Because he says when it, earth becomes without, he says you are the replenishers. Right. And so your job responsibility, God loads you with seed and give you the blessings. Why? Because you are the part of God's retribution. You are the ones that God is going to use to make sure that there's always things in the earth being kept. Yes. And when it looks like you're going down, he says, no, nah, because I gave you a vision to take on a hundred more things. And so I'm going to load you. Some people have things that are working in their lives right now, and they're uncomfortable with the status quo. Why? Because God has made them uncomfortable. Why? Because he needs to get more to them because he's proven them in the small things. He's seen them in what they have given out of everything they have. And he says, now that I know I can trust your stewardship and your heart towards me, and I can give you stuff that you won't become stingy and hold it to yourself. He said, why? Because I need you to take care of a whole community. Yes. See, we're in an anointing now that is about to give us citywide yes. expansion. It's like what God has given us now. It's not just, it's no longer just my house. I'm not good until everybody in my community is good. Everybody connected to me got to be blessed. Everybody. I want to look around, and when I shout, everybody shout. Why? Because we're all feeling in the moment that we're in that God is expanding because when he speaks a word and he says this is the season for something to happen, everybody who's connected to what God said, everybody who's a living being who is in place and who's in order in God, don't you know you go up with what God is moving in? Don't you know that you got victory next? Don't you know that success is automatic? Because God never wants your name and the name that he has given you that represents him to be put to shame. So most of us are unprepared for what we pray for. When you pray for something and not prepare for it, you're not getting it. I'm going to say that again. Listen, when you pray for something and you've not prepared for it, you're not getting it. Why you're not getting it? Because God doesn't waste anything. Right? He doesn't waste anything. He said he'll pour out blessings that you won't have room to contain. And so God is saying, when I'm getting ready to bless your life, that means that if whatever you had to hold where you were, if he says, I'm going to give you more, it behooves you to go get something to be able to hold more and handle more. Why? Because I'm in my season of increase. I'm in my time of blessing. And sometimes we are waiting for it to show up, but by the time it show up and you've not put nothing in place to handle it, it's going to pass you right by because you won't even recognize it because it will not find itself being attracted to what you, where you are and what you're doing because you've not made room for it. Somebody say make room. Make room. Say I'm enlarging, I'm enlarging and I'm expanding. I'm expanding. Say I got to make room for what God is about to do. Are y'all getting that? You got to make room. So the extra measure of preparation tell God that you are truly ready. The extra measure of prep preparation tell God you're ready. Preparating, preparation, or preparing 
for what God has spoken to or what you're believing for says to heaven, you are serious, you bought into it, you are in agreement, and I've gone before to put things in place because why? I already know it's happening. I'm not waiting for it to happen like I said to you this morning as we was exhorting. We know things are about to happen, and that's why we're putting things in place. So when God manifests it, we already know. So when everybody is getting excited, say, I was expecting no, I went and got a keychain because he told me he would give me some keys. Are y'all hearing me? That makes me think of your story, uh, Sharon, Deacon and Sharon. You know how you went and got them dresses? She got an incredible story how she went and had them dresses because she wanted her little girl. And she went and got those dresses. Remember you said, is it okay if I say that? It's a powerful testimony. This is how we overcome the enemy. We share our story. Somebody say, wow, she did that? Man, that's what happened because now faith is active. Right, right, right. It is an action. Faith is not just something you say and feel good and get googly bumps and run around the church, and that's wonderful. But if you don't put any action to the corresponding, right. come on, word that you're speaking, then what you are asking for, it cannot show up. It's going to pass you right by. As a matter of fact, you've not even changed your dial so you won't see it. And that's why the words say, not the same old, same old. It's time to expect. You know, sometimes we've been praying so long that we get so dull and waiting, so we say, I don't expect nothing to happen. You know, I know we pray, and that's why sometimes people sit in the chair when you're saying, praise God. And I don't know why we come all the way to church and we don't participate in the, in the, in the church. I, I don't understand. I don't understand how we came all the way into an atmosphere where it's charged with the anointing, except that the enemy sends some people to be like blockers. They praise blockers. They worship blockers. Y'all not hearing me. They people that has been set. It's like Tuma sitting up on the wall that tries to stop the flow. Some people show up, and they only have an assignment by hell to make sure the praise don't go right, to make sure that the level of what has to be spoken and released in the earth cannot go to where it has to go because now as we are sin guys in places, we are attracting things. Angels are on assignment waiting for you to give them a charge. And when you don't have faith to believe what God says and you don't start preparing for it, it tells heaven that you're not ready. And you can write 100 vision boards and you can tell 99 people of what God is getting ready to do. But if you don't put faith in action, if you don't start going and get your keys because God said I'm getting to get a key. God told me, I remember we came to Boca Raton when we first moved here to do ministry. I think it was in 2001. And when we came from Miami, we went and got an apartment here. We didn't really know the area. We knew God had called us to this area, especially in Boca, and so we had gone to get an apartment to stay in. And you know, right about then, I didn't have a million dollars to go get a house because I was in the houses looking at these houses with elevators, right? And I'm thinking, ooh, how much this cost? And I remember the Holy Spirit said to me as I was in the foyer of one of the houses because I'm thinking, we're going to move and we're going to Boca, and you know, I'm going to get this big old house, and you know, I got faith. Come on, we're going to do it. And when I stood in the foyer of the house, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, look around. You got enough faith for this? Why? Because it's the currency of heaven. And sometimes we have small faith. And the reason why we have small faith is because we're operating in a low-level love. Now, let me go there for a moment. Because the Bible says faith works by love. And so if my faith is not working for what my vision is, that means I need to grow in another place of love that I can grow in another level of faith. Come on that can begin to put me in a position where what I'm believing for, it can find itself attracted to me because I've called for it. I have securedness and love to be able to handle it. Why? Because love keeps me dying for what is necessary for me to watch over. It's responsibility. It's responsibility. And sometimes we're asking for things, but we don't want the responsibility that it takes to maintain it. It looks good when everybody is doing stuff and you just show up, and it's like, I would like to have that. But I'm going to tell you, um, when this woman of God told me a story about how she put them dresses in the closet and she was believing for her baby, wave your hands, just let them see you, Deacon and Sharon. And she said, I went and got me some little girl dresses, didn't you? Because I wanted a little girl. She was believing by faith. She went to the store. She said, I'm going to have my little girl. She went and got some dresses. See, some people can think it crazy, and then some people can say, but I did pray, and I did. I went and got, sometimes we're going off the motion, but we're not spiritually registering because it's a spiritual law. It's just not a natural thing because, right, sometimes we want to do the activity, but we've not engaged in the spiritual place that is now going to draw into our lives what we wrote by the vision of the spirit because God gives you vision. Right? Vision comes through the heart and not through the head. 
It's not coming through your eyes. It's coming through your heart. And God has been trying to give new vision because he's rewriting some things in the earth. The canvas is being so swept clean. God is saying, you're going to have what you say, rewrite it. You're in such a legal time of opening up your mouth right now and changing the course of your life. And God is setting you up to be successful. And he's saying, but if you can't see it, you won't have it because you won't say it. And if you can't see it and say it, you won't prepare for it. So we want success, but we're not going to see those things that we're believing to get success in because we're not operating in it. And this makes everybody kind of, you know, when you start speaking this and talking about this, because we come to church and most times we believe that God's going to do everything and he did do it. But you are active participator and a partner with Christ to make sure what is in the heavens get in the, dirt, in the earth because you're the portal and the gate he has to bring it through. So there's some things that God is requiring you got to do. He said, I did my part. You got to do yours. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so listen to this. So when I was here praying, guys, and I was believing for this house, and we moved in this apartment, and we got this apartment, right? I think we lived in that apartment for two years. By the time we was coming, we came here, we were starting the church. We had so much going on. We weren't even thinking about looking for no, it wasn't even on our calendar, our radar. The church was the most important thing. Every sacrifice we made was to go to build the church. We put everything that we had, our own resources, everything to say we want to make sure the church is established for the people that God has assigned us for. So we went ahead to prepare. We start counting chairs. How many people y'all expecting? Our first school we went to, I think we might have put in 100 or 50 chairs. I don't know. But they got filled. And when they got filled, God said, now measure out another. And when you start seeing that I have now maxed out where I am, he's pushing you to measure out something else. Because God wants you to grow and increase for real. Because every time you grow and increase, it's a part of his multiplication system. You were born to multiply. You were born to increase. You were born to keep ascending. You were born for your life to keep evolving and changing. They, who was talking about it? Maybe, who was, was he talking about in leadership meeting that you see a baby? I think it was Deaconess Lincoln. If you see a child that is somebody who's supposed to be growing, and they're 32, and they're still on diapers, and they're on the bottle, right? And they go measure you. Like, when you go to the doctor, they were saying, who was it, Glenda? Doctor, it was Glenda. She was saying when they measure you, you know, when you go to the doctor, and they say, you've grown this much. And when they mark your growth, and it's five years later, and you have not grown, something is wrong. They're saying, nah, something is wrong in the makeup. And so they start running tests to see why is this baby not growing? Why is this baby not coming into another place of maturity. Because why? When you grow in maturity, the proper process, you are able to manage more. You're able to handle more. Why? Because God wants to bless you. He wants to bring things out of heaven into the earth and give you stewardship to manage over it so people can see the greatness of God because of you. And that's not just material things I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you can understand how to manage these natural things and you can bless God and speak his word and do what he says to, then God gives you supernatural things. That is more weighty, it's more costly than all the natural things we have. Are y'all with me? So listen to this. The extra measure of preparation, it tells God that you are truly ready. Opportunity will pass by you if you're not prepared for what you're asking for. Preparation, guys, is work. Preparation is work. Preparation is work. What is preparation? Point number one is work. What is preparation? Point number two is work. What is preparation? Point number three is work. And the enemy has so messed us up because we're evolving into increase. God is talking about enlargement. He's rewriting things. And the enemy is making you get tired and not able to work, not wanting to watch over man or to do anything. And so because you're that, because you're tired and because you're just like, I can't take no more and I'm, I'm just spent emotionally, you know, I want to take no more children, I don't want to feed no more people, I don't want to hug no more folks, I don't want to tell nobody else about Jesus, I don't find a lot. I did that 10 years ago, Dr. Rackley. Don't ask me to witness to nobody else because I put my time in. And when you have done something that you've only measured up to a certain part, your life is not going to grow beyond what you've measured. And we can be as angry as we want, but you can't grow into what you see that is happening because things are evolving constantly. And if you don't change the wine skin, if you don't make a decision that I'm going to stretch myself and I'm going to extend my capacity to something else, then I won't be able to have anything else. Why? Because faith works by love. And love is the thing that makes you sacrifice for the benefit of what you've been assigned to do. 
Because if you have a business in here right now, I'm teaching today. Yeah. It's okay. We shouted already, right? I'm glad we got it out. Because I got a lady's principles down in you because Jesus people proclaim we can't stay here no more. Yeah. Right. Jesus people proclaim we got to measure out now what God has already said we're supposed to have. Shouting around the church and say we're going to have a building that's not going to get us a building. But it's going to be that we come together and work. Put our hands to the plow. Get our faith not only by saying it, step out. Because if a community of people in Texas can come together and say we're going to save and rescue a generation, what do we supposed to do to rescue the next generation? Just because you made it, it's not good enough. It's that we all make it. It's that until our children's children's children, we're establishing a stronghold in the earth that would allow our children's and children to have something that we can say we are part of. We went before them to prepare land, to put things in place. Why? Because we already know the times that are happening. We already know it's going to be a drought and a famine of the word. We already know the love of people going to go cold. So what we're going to do, we're going to store up on love. Y'all not getting this. See, when he starts telling you it's going to be a depletion of something, he starts giving you preparation tools to say, prepare yourself, you're going to need more love. Why? Because you're going to be challenged in your faith, and if you don't have love, you won't have faith to work anything, to get anything done. So he makes us aggravated and frustrated in life so we can wear out in love, and we don't have no sacrifice for nothing, but yet we want to build businesses, and yet we want to have greatness, and we talked about the houses and the stuff we want to get, and God is saying, but yet I'm proving you to see if you prepared for what you've been praying for. Because with every active thing that is going to materialize in the earth, it's going to take a greater active thing happening in the spirit. Why? Because it's the anchoring place. Okay, here we go. So what we need to understand is that preparation is what? It's work. And most times we are wanting what we have not labored for. Second Thessalonians, let's go there right there. Let's go there. I know this is one of those messages that make you feel uncomfortable, but that's okay. We're going to be okay because we got to grow. Say, we got to grow and go. God has declared millionaire status over this house. God has spoken to you. You done got prophecies. You're supposed to be out of debt by now ten times. You're supposed to be in the house. You know the house you wrote on the vision board? And you keep looking at it and you're frustrated because it seems like the more God tells you that he wants you to have something or do something, look like stuff start breaking off. Because why? He is making you activate your faith. It becomes uncomfortable because he's trying to push you to a new place of faith. That's what God is doing. Okay, so listen. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 10. Look what it says. I'm in the Amplified. It says, for while we were yet with you, we gave you this rule and charge. If anyone will not work, neither let him eat. Now, this is a law of God. He says, if you don't work, you should not eat. If you do not do work to plant the seed and water the plant, then it won't grow and produce the fruit out of it for you to enjoy and be sustained by. Every tree we see, somebody had to open up the ground, put the seed in it. Somebody came along to water it, but it had to keep, and, and it took consistency to keep watering it. They had to stand there and make sure the, the, the ground was fertilized and everything was in place because God was saying that if this tree don't grow, I put you there, I gave you seed-bearing fruit, so that out of you there has to be something that comes out of your life that keeps producing that somebody else can benefit from. And he's saying that if you don't plant yourself, people of God, we are trees unto the Lord. If you don't plant yourself and get still and stay watered in the word and let that which God has put in you now, all those visions and dreams as you stay planted and you in the soil of the word, you are operating in faith. You are saying what God says. The sun is shining over you. The water is happening. As you grow in proper process, there should be a time that you grow that you begin to bear fruit. That what comes out of your life or what was in you, why? When people see it, you say, it was always in me. I always had a million-dollar deal. I always was called to write books. I've always been called to travel around the world. God has always called me. My heart passion was to be a philanthropist. And when people see you doing, you say, I'm doing what I was called. I was planted in the earth to bear fruit. Why? Because out of certain trees, it bears fruit. Come on. That is going to be so productive that other people can eat out of your life or benefit from what you are called to do. And you keep seeing the reproduction of God while I'm multiplying, I'm increasing, I'm replenishing the earth. And that's a charge that God has given us as people of God. He says, I didn't put you here just not to have nothing. I didn't put you here. I put you here to stay planted so you can grow properly, so you can get all that you need. So out of your life, you can bear fruit in season and out of season if you stay planted. So no matter what is happening, I'm still producing. No matter what is going on, I'm still thriving. They can say the stock market doing whatever because I prepared. I heard 10 years ago the stock market was going to do that. What you need to do, put something in a jar. Did you have a plan for anything? 
It's coming. Did we put something in place? Okay, I know y'all looking at me. Okay. This is the problem that we have been, uh, we've seen created today. When we create systems of handouts, we make people lazy, and lazy is demonic. I'm going to say it real loud. I wish all our speakers was in here, but that's okay. They're coming. Listen, lazy is demonic. It's a trap and a trick from the enemy. Because God said, I made you to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish. Come on. He said, I put in you ideas and dreams. I've given you vision of the heart. And that's why life is uncomfortable. And that's why you're not satisfied where you are. And some people have just made themselves fit into a box. You know, and you've shrunk yourself because you did not keep, will, you know, you, let me say this. You were not willing to keep dying and sacrifice through love for what needs to come out of you by faith so other people can benefit from it. And so as we grow, we want more faith so we can produce greater things. They say little word, right? When you don't have a lot of word, that's why it says faith cometh by hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So when you don't sit in word, which is seed, which is being soaked, which is being nourished, when you don't sit in it, you don't have enough faith in what God says so you can actually move out to do what he said because I don't trust God that much because if you don't apply anything God said, you'll never develop trust with God. You got to first step out and see if God's going to do something. Well, God told me to go, and we get disappointed because it doesn't happen the way we say. But when we got that apartment, and I stayed in that apartment, I'm telling you, I stayed, we stayed there for two years. When we stayed there for two years, the Lord told me, I remember he spoke to me one day, he said, it's time to move. No money. Everything we got, we put in the church. We ain't got nothing. But God told me, I'm moving. Now, I had to hear God enough and believe God enough that I went and got some boxes because I'm moving. Don't know where I'm going, but I'm getting up out of here. I went and got some boxes, and I started boxing up stuff. In that little apartment, we were walking like a maze. My husband said, God told you? He said, if you tell me God told you, then we're going to do it. God told me I'm moving. You coming with me? Because I'm moving. <laughs> he said, we moving. We got the boxes and packed up those little boxes. Vicki, you remember? We walking through the apartment like this, like it's a maze. And I don't even know. Maybe it was... Maybe it was seven or eight months after that. Someone called us and said they wanted to bless us with $10,000. $10,000, Vicki, go find us a house. <laughs> we go out, we're looking. I got $10,000. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. I'm telling y'all the power of faith, the power of you preparing for what God said, because I got a word, and if I ain't got nothing else, I got a word. And God, let me tell you something. You can take his word to the bank. He said, I don't know when I'm moving, but I'm moving. So if I actively start getting engaged with the word that God gave me and I start preparing for the move, guess what? Move got to happen because I done left that. The old place, I'm not even there no more. Are y'all? The devil can't even visit me there. I've already moved. It's just materializing. But in faith, in spirit, I've already packed boxes. I'm already in my next house. Then I get a phone call. Ding. God told me to give you $10,000. Bless you, $10,000. $10,000, that's enough for me to go put down a down payment somewhere. We go find a house. Back then, houses wasn't like it is now. You can find a nice house for $350,000. At least you get your start. We went and found the house. I think it was almost $400,000. But we went and got the house. And we went and got the house. House showed up. Well, I, ex I exercised in faith. I took the boxes. I packed them because he told me I was moving. I got those boxes walking in the maze. You got to be uncomfortable for where you're going. You got to be willing to be uncomfortable and be inconvenient for your vision to come forth. You got to be able to sacrifice from all you want to eat now so you can have what you need for next. Are y'all hearing me? Denzel Washington put out a movie, uh, what was it called, The Great Debater? And in that movie, that one of the famous lines they said, you, he said to the young man, he said, you're going to have to sacrifice for what you want um, tomorrow for today. So in, or, in other words, you got to do what you need to do now. Yeah. Now. Say now. now. You got to practice this now. You got to walk around like you're the executive now. You got to buy the suit right now and walk around and start practicing. Why? Because you're sending out signals from the earth to engage things. Of the behavior brings spirits. 
When you don't renew your mind and you're still acting like you're broke and you're poor and you don't have nothing, then you're going to keep seeing spirits show up in your life. They are subject and summons to the way you are performing and behaving in the earth. You are drawing spirits to your life that will keep you bound in your current situation. You will never move to your next because you have not prepared spiritually nor naturally for what God has already promoted you. And when your name come up, when people prophesy to you, when we give you a word, when we say it, it happens. Now, you got to move out on what the word said and begin to actively engage to participate with it. God says we're supposed to get a new building. He said, y'all getting a new building. Y'all move. You know y'all out of here? Yes. And the reason why we haven't seen the movement is because the people haven't fully bought into the thought because sometimes we're waiting for other people to do it for us instead of us saying, I'm a part of that, and if we don't move, I can't move. Why? Because movement, when you are connected in community and unity, when one blessed, God sees us as all being blessed as a unit. And he says, guess what? Everybody in your platoon can't advance. So it's important for you to take time to get their minds renewed because they're participating in the same behavior. That behavior is producing the same outcome. But yet I told y'all I want y'all to be millionaires. So anybody bought a book, anybody took a business class, anybody opened up, y'all better hear me. You got to renew your mind. Anybody get a book on how to become a millionaire? Anybody when they got a tool? But we're going to be blessed and we're going to be rich. How? Because you're not going to be able to manage what God is about to pour out. If you have a broke mentality and your account keep going into overdraft and you can't pay what you need to pay now, God is a God of stewardship. So he's not going to give you and add to you just because you're cute and you show up and you sing all the time, right, children? And you come and play the drums or you serve. It's, it, 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 it's not going to happen just like that. Now, that's good. You get some merit, some points for that. But you're going to have to actively engage in what it is God is saying. Y'all hearing me? Yeah. So that you can see the manifestations because we keep telling y'all prophetically, you're in a time of manifestations. We keep telling you prophetically, you're in a time of increase. We keep telling you prophetically, you're in a time of overflow, more than enough. God is saying, but it can't go no, long, no further than how you think. So if you don't change your mind, you won't change your behavior. And if you don't change your behavior, the same things are going to keep revisiting your life. And though you're saying, I want to come out, and I believe God wants me to do something, we make God be the problem. And God is saying, I'm not the problem. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Come on. Somebody say, I'm wealthy. I'm, wealthy. I'm, wise, I'm wise. And I'm successful. I'm successful. Somebody say, I'm growing. I'm, growing. I'm, expanding. I'm expanding. Say, I'm leveling up. I'm, leveling up. I'm doing my work doing my to get to my next. Somebody say prepare. prepare. Okay, so let's keep going. We'll give you a little bit more. The only place that success comes before work is where? Some people smart. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. <laughs> but there is no place is in, in, active, um, in active manifestations of what you're going to see where people see success without work. Everybody, anybody in here own their own business? Raise, raise your hand. Okay. Look at business owners. There we go. Put it up. Yeah. Okay. So business owners, do you not have to work yeah. to make sure what you have been given by the vision that you stepped out to see happen, that you begin to file, to believe for? Do you not have to put work in place to make sure you prepared for the clients, for the customers, right? For what it is you say you're doing, you have to put preparation. You can say, I'm, I'm called to have a business, but if you don't put any active things in place, the business is just an idea, it's not a vision. I say it's an idea, it's not a vision. Vision is what you do. I say vision is what you do. Everything else that is the thought for you to become great is just an idea. It doesn't become a vision till you put it. He say, write it. You got to make it legal. Why? Because when you write stuff, you make it a legal document in the earth. When you write it, it becomes serious. You say, nah, my vision is not just going to be an idea in my head. I'm writing my vision out. It's a legal document. And so I'm writing out this legal document. Why? Because I'm letting the agents that be, that have been summoned by angels to perform this vision, he says, write it out, right? So it can take feet and it can take um, take off. Yeah, you got to write it out. You got to make it plain. I forgot that one. What do you mean you got to make it plain? It means you got to do your research. 
You got to do your homework. How much is it going to cost? I know you want a nursing facility for whatever. How much is it going to cost? Have you seen how many rooms you need, how many beds you need, how many people you got to have on staff? Have you looked at the insurance? Do you know what you got to cover? Yeah. See, we got to do the work. Say work. work. Say because I'm expanding, because I'm, I'm enlarging, work. and I'm increasing. Okay. Salvation is the only thing, guys, that was given to us that was free. Everything else you got to work for. Look what it says in Philippians. Let me start moving. Philippians 2 and 12, it says, Wherefore, my, bro- my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. This is Paul talking. He says, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You are not working for salvation because salvation was free by grace through faith. Amen? You're not working for salvation. Check this out. Grace is time, so God gave time to recover you back to belief. Your issue is you don't believe. The issue with the church is belief. Ooh, y'all quiet, boy. Ooh, y'all take this in. The issue with the church is not that you don't pray. It's not that you don't fast. It's not that you don't love God. The issue with the church is that you don't believe. It's a belief issue. Because if you believe, you wouldn't be where you were. If you believe, you wouldn't keep acting the way you act. If you believe, we'll see more things happening in the earth that proves that God is God. He says the issue with the church is the condition of belief. It is his good will, his pleasure to bless you. God says, I want to do you good and make you happy. I want to make you a billboard and show you all. I need all the devils in the earth to know that I'm a good God. Yeah. I need them to know I'm a healer. I need them to know I'm yeah. a redeemer. So sometimes when you see yourself get sick, he said, if you didn't know that I could, be, you could believe for healing, then you couldn't be a billboard of my announcement that I'm a healer. And why you need to do that? Because somebody needs to see that I'm God. And so when you got sick and God healed you, he said, go tell everybody it was me. Why? Because while you are looking for just what you can get, God said, I'm looking for people to get saved. So I gave time and grace to recover you back to belief. Let's keep moving. Ephesians 2 and 8. Can we get that and put that up? Ephesians 2 and 8. Let's read this. He says, for by grace are ye saved through faith. We got it? By grace, look at that. That's the Amplified. God's remarkable compassion, favor, drawing you to Christ. That you have been saved, actually delivered from judgment, and given eternal life. You've been delivered, believers, from judgment. Why? Because you obey God. Judgment is not for the unrighteous. It's for the unrighteous. It's for lawbreakers. So when we hear judgment is coming, we should not get scared. We should start rejoicing because God has to judge the wicked to bless the righteous. Because there's some things that's been robbed from your life by wicked folks, by people who did not do what God told them to do, to give, to extend to you what you need. He says, but, put it back. He says, but, This is what I want you to know. He says, but you've been delivered from judgment and given eternal life through faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, not through your own effort, but it is the undeserved gracious gift of God. So understand this. He's saying this. Look what it says in the King James Version. He says, not of works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, check this out. Work out. Know what it means? He says work out. Work out simply means work to secure your salvation. Not working for salvation. Working to anchor your salvation. He says you're going to have to work this out. You're going to have to anchor your salvation. Why? The word ordained comes from the word order, which is a command. It is a governmental term. That's why you got to become agents of the kingdom so you can really understand the constitution of the word of God so you can stop acting like you are a handout because you are legal. Paul said, I'm of the government of Rome. Back down when you deal with me. Why? Because Rome was the greatest ruler. Caesar didn't play. He says, listen, when people used to hear you a citizen of America, nations used to tremble because they didn't want to deal with the power force of America. I say they used to. They used to. And just like anything, when you stop valuing what God has given you and how to operate in it for its fullness, then you don't get the benefits out of it any any longer. And that's what happens to everything in our life. Are y'all hearing me so far? I'm getting ready to let you go. 
But let me finish telling you guys this, because when he says you're going to work out your soul's salvation with fear and trembling, he's saying you got to secure your salvation. And then he goes on and he says this. Y'all heard this? Listen to this, y'all. This is so good. He says, so, which God had before ordained. Before. Before. Before you got here. Not only did he have a mind to rescue you. God said, I'm going to rescue you. And then I'm going to give you legitimate authority. I'm going to put in you because I worked in you through salvation. Come on. Through your salvation. You have no idea what salvation did for you. He says, through your salvation, I worked in you the ability. It's already in you. He that worketh in me. Come on. He's, work, he's already interwoven faith in me. You didn't even have to ask for it. He said, I'm going to give you a measure on credit. Are y'all hearing me? He gave you faith already. You ain't got to be on the altar praying, praying, praying. Faith, I need some faith. I need some more faith. No, he's saying, I already put faith in you. All you got to do is work it out of you. How do you work faith out of you? You got to start walking out to apply what God gave you by only by faith that gives you the ability to accomplish what he said. He says, I put it in you. Now work it out of you. Manifest something in the earth. That's the only way you're going to see faith working. Why? Go lay hands on somebody and see them get healed. He says, why? Because you will never know I'm a healer. You will never know that salvation put works in you that you can perform in the earth. Those works, oh my God. He says, I've given you. These works, when we start reading in the scriptures, and it talks about the different types of uh, ministry gifts that God has given us. He put in you through salvation before you was even in the earth in your mother's womb he ordained you he said I order I order you to be a prophet before you got here I put in you the equipment the tools come on your innate ability the way you played on the playground told me you was a prophet are y'all hearing me the hell that was coming to you recognized who you was because innately it was already in you. And then God saved you and recovered you back just to believe him for what he put in you that you were working out of you to see things in the earth be manifested because God said they can't see what is in heaven until I save you, worked in you what I put in you so you can work it out of you for somebody to see it. So faith is not just shaking your head. Love is not walking around saying, I love you. You can't hug. You can't give. It's active. It's an action word. It causes something to happen. Faith works by love. They work together. Because when you have faith, when you have love, you're able now. That's why we're going through the series on Wednesday nights that some of y'all are missing. But you will never stand before God and say, we did not do it. The Bible tells ministers that we got to preach the gospel, be instant in season and out of season. It does not tell us we got to hug people every day, club, you know, hug, rub up on people, tell them, do you like me? It's not emotional. The word of God's government, his constitutional word, is the word that has been established before the foundations of the world. And when you find yourself saying, I now believe, God, I want to give my life to you, he said, I just activate you. Salvation was what God put in you through his work on the cross that gave you the ability through that to work something out of you that demonstrate Christ is in you in the earth. That's how they know you're a believer and you're in Christ. Not because you got a bumper sticker, not because you have a t-shirt, but because I'm working something out of me that was in wrath in me through salvation that they know that he's a healer because he worketh in me. And that working in me causes me to go lay hands on somebody and that they're able to see that Christ is in me, the hope of glory, because I've touched them. They was once blind, but now they can see why. Because God works something out of me called the mirror works of miracles. It's such a governmental term. That's why when you go to the court, the courts begin to say, I order you this. They, they, they order. They're, they're ordering is decreeing. It's so governmental. It's so rule. <laughs> it's so kingly. It's, it's like it's so high. And that's why sometimes we're, we're still saying, can you give me? He said, no, decree it out of yourself. That's right. Can you please? Will y'all please? He says, who gave you that mind? That's not the mind that is in Christ Jesus. That's a handout. And that's why you're lazy. And that's why you can't get up and do anything. That's why we sit on the curb waiting for God to meet us. Well, you know, I've been praying and I'm waiting for God. No, you're not. You're not waiting for God. God is saying, work out of you what I put in you through your salvation. 
that you can now demonstrate faith is in you. You got to demonstrate love is in you by loving somebody. Oh, y'all not hearing me? You got to get up and go out and say, I am concerned about what he's concerned about. Why? Because I know how to touch other people's lives so they can know Christ is working in me. They can't know you saved just by your T-shirt. What makes us any different from the people who are on your job that's getting promoted that you're mad with and they are heathens? And he says, but I put something in you that through salvation that is called faith that worked by grace that gave you time to come back to believe God that you're able to manifest something in the earth. So he's looking at you, say, produce, producer. He's saying to you, he's saying, I made you to manufacture wealth. I'm going to say that over here. I say, God said, I made you to manufacture wealth. Why, I've given you ability for you to rise up and speak into your economy and say, I'm not going to live broke no more. And I know we say that, hear me, guys, because we've all been in places. We need money to go possess a building. We get it. We get it. But God is saying, I put on the roll everybody I assigned to this vision in order for them to bring their resources to make sure not only are we moving in such speed of the spirit, because the vision says we're supposed to do these things, and talking about spiritual needs and teaching and training and the vision, the mission we had to go through yesterday. What's the mission of Jesus' people? What's the mission? That's the vision. The mission is what we do to bring movement to the vision. The vision. The mission is, somebody know the, the mission? Good. What is it? To build and equip Jesus' people. Simple. It's on the wall. Right in your eyeball. Our mission is to build and equip. I don't know what they did at the Baptist church. I don't know what they did at the church, um, Brother Watermill and them. I don't know what they did down there at the first, bat, wherever you left, wherever you can. I don't know what they did. But it's time for us to strip off what was no longer going to be the right mind you need to move out to accomplish what you say because people can't see you till they see you. You can say what you want to say, but they can't see you. And if they can't see you, they can't really respect you for the domain God has called you to dominate in. And that's any place in your life. Wherever you are in your life, they can't see you. Sometimes your sound and your register of faith is too low. So the people that needs to pick up your witty idea or they need to now see your business plan or they need now to give you a promotion, you are now canceling out what it is that you stepped out. You say, I'm going to do it. But your signal and your sound that is not in agreement with what you stepped out to do, it brings confusion in the realms of the spirit. They're saying, do you want it or do you not want it? We confused. Angels are like, should we go or should we not go? Because in the camp, when you look at Moses, they was dealing with different types of words. They was blending and mixing. We're in a time of mixing and blending. We're in a time of saying things that as soon as we sow the seed, and by the time we speak it, we uproot the seed before we even get out the house. Because you get one phone call from somebody that is familiar of your past when you say you're trying to go and you can't seem to let go some people who keep bringing back words that are tumors to your vision. That is tumors to your movement. That is tumor to you going, y'all hearing me? It is a tumor. And the fact that you got saved, God put in you through salvation the ability to perform and uh, um, accomplish the vision he's given you. And it ain't nobody's issue. That why you're not, no, no, no. It's too many people that get to a point where they put on blinders. But you got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. We got to get to points. I know I do. I have to get to the point because sometimes my crippling things from what God delivered me from out of abandonment or rejection, it makes you hold on to people. It makes you hold on to old places. It makes you want to be safe in this because you feel like you can control it and you know it. But when God starts calling you to go and level up to new places, you got to look at everything in your life and say, trash, trash, trash. Why? Because it doesn't have measure. It doesn't have capacity to handle. As a matter of fact, if I'm trying to build and I don't have the right material for where I'm going, when you look at the systems now, they tell you got to upgrade. They don't even make some of the older pieces or parts that you're getting into new cars. New, they don't make them no more. They saying if you want to drive a Tesla, you're going to have to come into the mindset of what we do. Because we ain't making Toyotas like that no more. And if you want to stay in a Toyota, you're going to have to go chase down somebody to find old parts that are not longer making it. They're not manufacturing it no more. Why? Because they're moving in a time called quantum. 
Quantum is the speed of the kingdom, but it's the new speed of business. Quantum is the speed of the kingdom. It's the new speed of business. And God is moving in quantum speed for business. Are y'all with me so far? Okay, I'm going to finish because I'm going to let y'all go. This is too good. And so he said to me, they say, let them leave. We'll stay. Listen to this. Because I don't want nobody telling the possibility I kept these people in here too long. Because he'll be with them. Will you let them people go home? Listen, though. Listen. He says this. You got to establish it. He said you got to, he said walk in them. It's, it's decreeing. You got to walk in it. So nobody will see it unless you start walking it out. Right? You got to walk. You know, we sing that song. Walk it out. Everybody, walk it out. Walk it out. Walk it out. And it feels good to walk it out. But these people be saying stuff. I'm going to tell you right now. That you be, I'm t- listen, prophets are everywhere, and some of them are outside of the order of God. And they are now speaking, and they are now predicting things that they want to see that God didn't say, but they have a prophet spirit sometimes. And you can look at things that are happening from movie theaters or people. they in Hollywood. they writing the movies. We can see stuff coming out now. You say, did you see that movie? Honey, they declaring what has already been spoken, but the devil is trying to give you his version. Now, you can get stuck in the devil burger and walk it out and stay carnal and walk it out. You walking straight on the hill. Walk it out. Walk it out. <laughs> or you can get in the word of God because walk it out was what God said. He said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. He said, I want you to walk it out in me. Walk it out. Why? Because we walk, which is a work. Walk is a work. It's activity. It's movement. You can't walk if you're not moving. So he says, I want you to walk it out. I want you to know that you got to go and actively make movement happen. It's not going to move until you move. Okay, got to let y'all go for real. Okay, what I'm saying is that it's not enough just to believe in Jesus. The Bible says the demons believe. Paul is talking here, what I just read. Paul is talking to believers, telling them, um, you got to work what has been put in you through salvation. Salvation includes this, guys. It includes blessings, healing, rescuing delivering and persevering, preserving. I'm going to say it again. Salvation includes blessings. That's why I'm blessing the city, blessing the village. Because you got salvation did it. You did nothing to deserve to be blessed. Christ Jesus did it all. And then he interwoven in you through salvation that put in you by faith what he did on the cross. He says you're blessed because I said you're blessed. And I took the keys, snatched them out of hell, put it in you, and I wrote my name on the inside of you. His name is carved on the inside of you. When the devil tries to show up, say, they back off, because do you see who I am? I'm the property of Jesus. And I'm blessed. So no matter what you bring against me, I'm blessed. And even if it comes against me, come on. The Bible tells me, work it out. I got sick, work it out. My money is short, work it out. You understand? Look like I'm... You know, we have an argument, look like nothing ain't happening, I can't believe, work it out. Me and you don't like each other, work it out. Salvation gave you enough faith to work out all the hellish things you're going on in the earth because hell could not stop what Jesus Christ went and conquered. He conquered it all for you. Finishing. He put in you the ability to be successful, the ability to increase and multiply. The ability to love was what's not, it was not humanly or naturally possible for you to do. It's called supernatural. That's why we call it supernatural. It's not humanly possible for me to do what I do. How can I show up for 24 years holding down anything in the earth when I was a broken child looking for love in the wrong places, didn't know my mama and my daddy, met my biological mother at 36, had two kids out of wedlock, been with the drug dealers. Who y'all, y'all ain't talking to y'all. You looking at me like I'm crazy. Let me tell y'all something. You looking at somebody who walked through hell. But I worked it out. I worked it out, honey. I walked it out and I worked it out. And I got stripes in the spirit that proves it. Why? Because when demons show up, they know my name. Because I put them down. I put them down. Everything I went through, you're going to put them down. That's how you gain respect in the spirit. Oh, we can't mess with Courtney. Don't go to her house. Courtney slay dragons. I'm going to tell y'all, don't go there. The devil will tell. When you have conquered certain realms in the spirit because you went through things, you get different types of strife. You get respect in the heavens. I'm telling you right now. The heavens be like this. When you walk through the heavens and they say the greatest mantle you can wear in heaven is humility. 
While you're around here with an attitude puffed up, can't nobody tell you nothing, you are shutting down heaven, the angels in heaven, that is the enforcement license that bring movement. They back you up. Angels show up, and when these demons see Michael and Gabriel, don't bring Michael and Gabriel. When they see Michael and Gabriel on your case, and God say, they got to succeed. I told their grandmama. They mamas, they daddy. Come on. It's on the line. My name is on the line. You got to go and bless Hattie. I'm telling you, angels show up, and they take the whole street. Anybody ever seen angels? I've seen angels. You've seen angels? When you have seen in the realm of the spirit, everything about you changed. Yeah. Now, some people see more demons than they see angels. They say, I saw the demons and they were holding me down, taking my breath. I couldn't sleep. I felt like, call on the name of Jesus. Gabriel and Michael show up to God's people. And that's what salvation gave you. Salvation gave you blessings. Salvation, say, I'm blessed because of salvation. I got to finish. Say, I'm blessed because of salvation. Say, I'm healed because of salvation. Say, I'm delivered because of salvation. Say, Christ Jesus, he did the work, and I'm working it out in Jesus' name. Come on, stand to your feet. I got to let y'all go. Boy, I got so much. I always have a lot. We can go on for two more hours. My main point, let me see. <laughs> Say it again. That's what I said. Preparation point one, point two, point three. How many points you got today? You taking away what? Your takeaway today is what? Preparation is work. Your time of being lazy, of having a lazy mindset, cannot manage and oversee the greater things of the spirit. It's already in you. Christ Jesus did it. And don't get caught up in trying to be successful in just in the earth because it takes work to maintain a realm. You know, we talked about prophetic realms at our last prophetic gathering, and I was talking about realms. When we talk about realms, a realm is your field or your mastery place where you get equipped with tools. So when we say the prophetic, we're not saying you're a prophet. We're saying you have the ability to access a supernatural realm that you're able to obtain spiritual supernatural weapons. Why? Because in a realm, God has given you tools so you can now facilitate your domain. What is your domain? It may be that your mountain, when we talk about domains, the place God has assigned you to in the earth, he never meant for you not to be prophetic in going there. What is prophetic, Apostle? It's being spiritual. He never told you to take off your priestly garment just because you opened up a business at a lemonade shop or a cookie shop or you got a barber shop, whatever you're doing. He says you are kings and priests. He gave you dominion. You're ruling in the city, out of the city. Wherever you put me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Amen. Because who shows up in my shop, they're gonna dim, I'm going to be able to show them Christ in me because what money can't do, the supernatural will. Are y'all hearing me? So he says you got to do this. And so when he calls us to walk into these earthly places, which are mountain places, which is marketplace, all these words are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. Kingdom, righteousness, authority, rule, kingdom. It's kingdom. It's government. Government is what? Let's break it down. Government is systems. You can't have a government without establishing systems. But he called you to rule in the systems. Are y'all hearing me? Yes. Now, I need y'all to get smart enough now so you don't keep sitting down waiting for something to happen, but you make something happen. It's going to happen because you get up and make it. If God said, I'm going to be wealthy, what do I need to do? If he tells me that and I have no knowledge about money, I probably should go get me a book, go online, take something to help me understand how to count. If he tells me I'm going to be a million, how many digits to a millionaire? Right, Brother Brick? <laughs> how many digits you need to be a multi? How many, what's that? Now, I wasn't that great in math, but I showed him how to count my money. <laughs> I promise you I know how to count my money. How much you need? <laughs> My kids say, uh, Grandma, they'll tell you, Jess is here. She'll tell you, Grandma, can you give me $10? You know, my, I, big mamas back in the day, they pulled their money out. <laughs> they took the pen. Remember, they had the pen and the handkerchief. They pulled it out. What you need, baby? 
you say five dollars. Big Mama gave you four ninety nine, <laughs> and that one dollar, that one penny, you got to believe by faith. But they were not giving you more than that. Christ Jesus gave us more than what we need. You have been bought and paid for by a tremendous price. Salvation is so real, guys. I want you guys to know that today because what he said to me is that how do we get to this place where the devil have tricked us with the spirit of entitlement? The spirit of entitlement. It's believing you deserve something that you've not worked for. And when you don't value work, and you become lazy. When, when he told me this, he says this. He says, every person God called was busy doing something, not sitting around being lazy. Laziness creates idleness, which is wastefulness. And he's not a wasteful God. God shows up to people who are busy. He went and got some fishermen. They were busy. He went and found the doctor. They were busy. You understand what I'm saying to you? What's your domain? Stop sitting and saying, well, you know, God called me to preach the gospel. Can you preach it with a lemonade shop? Can you preach the gospel and write a book? Can you be a New York Times bestseller that can influence the globe with the brightness of your life that shows up in a space where darkness is trying to rule? And you show up in there and you say, hey, what's up? How y'all doing? Jesus is Lord. He's Lord, man. And they say, he's Lord, yeah. You go in the back room, because when I used to work at the store for years, when I was young, I used to work at Neiman Marcus, and you know, I used to work with all the designers. And I used to sell, I'm selling all the high fi the hall fashion, high fashion, you know. After I got saved, when I left Hollywood, I had to go get a job, I had to work. Why? Because you can't tell the rent people, or your mortgage people, God loves me, and he's just working. You can't tell these people in this building. Let me wake y'all up, we're paying over $19,000 a month. Yeah, whoo, tell me about it. You know we had to have enough love to keep sacrificing to dying to hold something in the earth for God. When people don't see it, people don't care, people ain't interested. You're going to have to do the same. If God gave you a vision, you're going to have to have enough love and faith to die to your time that you want to go to the movies, you want to sit by the river, you know, you want to just make an excuse to escape. And you know, I just didn't feel like praying or coming to church today, you know. If you didn't show up to the house of God, where you can get this, where would you get this message? And though we can go to technology and we can say, well, I put, there is angels that show up in the gathering of the sanctuary. That is not everywhere. What God ordains us to meet, he puts appointments in the earth. He says, meet me there, I assign angels there. Now, every place else you want to be conveniently locked in through your, your mind that is lazy because you don't want to get up and stay consistent. You are showing God that you have not prepared. But that big vision you got right, you wrote down, you can't stay consistent with what God has signed you. How he's going to make you a ruler over more when you can't show up to be consistent in the, the stuff he's giving you? He said, I'm proving you that you love me enough to stay consistent. Can I tell you to work in the back and you stay there? Or do you keep saying, well, you know, they was going out of town. My friends and my cousins them was going. And I know I told y'all I was going. I just, listen, I, I just had to go. And I'm not talking about you can't take a vacation. And I'm not talking why. We all take vacations. I'm talking about when we go AWOL from holding a ram. Because when you don't show up in the spirit, you give dark agents, demons of darkness, access in the earth. And what we're seeing right now, this is going to be one of the worst hurricane seasons they are predicting over our state. What are we going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do besides sit, say what the news says? No, you're going to have to rise up and say not on our gate. You're going to have to start walking now. Prepare. Prepare in prayer now. Start getting oil and walk the street. Go out to the ocean. Speak to the climatical conditions because we got war going on. And you are the one he's put in the earth. He says, you turn it. Whatever you say it's going to be, it's going to say. Tell the storm not in Florida. Not while we here. No, you will not. And if you come through, you better not come through him making all that noise. And you better not take down one tree in my yard. So you got to get bold. You will not break a window. Come on. You will not take a towel off my roof because it costs money for me to replace it. I'm not because that's how the enemy robs from us too, right? So we got to rise up as this nation. And we got to understand what salvation gave to us. Because today I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to take a moment as we leave this place. And I want you to make a decision right now while you're standing in this room. And if you've not given your life to Christ, you don't and cannot participate and what it is, God is already actively moving into the earth to get accomplished through what he's given you in weapons. 
to take down the things that are opposing you from being successful. Salvation gives you. It's the beginning. He said, I gave you a measure of faith. Now, you can grow your faith through love. I fall more in love with Christ. I trust God more. I believe God more. Therefore, I can see through obedience. I can have more. Because if I don't believe God and I don't trust God, I'm not going to obey God. But when I believe God and I trust God, I will obey God. And when I obey God, the Bible says that brings blessings. The Bible says obedience, right? So while you're standing right there with your eyes closed, come on. Father, we thank you. We bless you and we praise you. We give you honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, that we was looking for houses and stuff, but you were looking for souls. Your greatest treasure is hidden in earthen vessels. And we pass it by every day. Opportunities to be wealthy because we won't see a child that is in need and step out of ourselves to inconvenience us to meet it. We won't see somebody that needs a hug and give it. We won't see somebody hurting, Father God, when you've given us through salvation tools to help others discover who you are by our faith. We won't operate in it. But today we stand to make a decision in this house. Let us repent for not showing up, for being ungrateful, for murmuring and complaining, for comparing ourselves with other people because we feel like what we have and what we've been given is just the bottom of the barrel and it's not nothing. When you've told us when we want to see more, we can work in it and we can grow in more. There is no limits in you. You are an eternal God. We operate out of eternity's time. It's called, Father God, eternity. It is a place, Father God, that give us infinity. It's on uh, the boundaries are nowhere set in the realms of the spirit. We walk in limitless success, limitless faith, limitless, limit, limitless wealth. We walk in it because it's out of eternity. So, Father, today we take off all the murmuring. Come on, let's take it off. We take off all the complaining. Father, the house that we're in, if it does not measure up with the vision of next, we are working our faith. And we are doing what it takes to now get the books, get the tools, do some natural things to put it in place so we can prepare ourselves for our next home. We can prepare ourselves right here for our next, doing what we need to do now to be prepared for what you've already declared that is coming tomorrow. So, Father, we repent. Right now, we ask you, Lord, in our salvation, to strip out everything that we've invited in this relationship that can no longer hang out with us. So we strip off idleness. We come out of laziness. We no longer participate, Father God, with words of defeat. We will not sit, Father God, in places, Lord God, any longer that makes us feel that we're not qualified and we're not valued when you told us you value us. We make a decision today to really believe you, Lord God, Come on, we are the body. We are your people. And we make a decision today to believe you. So, Father, we thank you by faith. We are growing. We're growing. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost right there. Pray right there. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Come on, he said we can actively build and work our faith. Tomorrow is going to be better because of what I'm praying right now. Oh, come on, pray. My, tomorrow is getting ready. I'm getting favor. I got some papers out there. I need, Father God, to come back in my faith. So I'm releasing faith out of this place right now. I say go into the courtroom. Come on. Go into the papers that has my name on it. People that are signed to give to me. People that must come and bless me. Deals that have to be signed. People that need to be healed because of me. Prayers that need to be rocked. Eyes that need to be opened because I lay hands. Father God, today I pray a prayer that I will never be at this level again that I ascend to a new place and I will work out that place of salvation and work the miracles and produce out of my life through salvation and faith and prove to people I believe you because they can see the evidence of my God that I'm living in the earth. We start right now today in Jesus' name. Now, if you don't believe in the Lord and you can say, I'm here today, I didn't know you was going to talk about this, and I'm not really a believer, and, but today I just think that after you've given that message, I realize that I don't want to be stagnated no more, not just watching people sit on the side of their salvation and be lazy in their salvation, but I heard the word, and I want to give my life to Christ because I want to get those tools working in me. I believe I'm a solution in the earth and not a problem. I believe I was born for greatness, and what I'm living does not meet that. Father, you told me I can lay hands on the sick, I can raise the dead, and you told me the greatest thing I can do is go be a light and a witness and tell other people they can do the same. Now, if you hear me by the sound of my voice and you know that you're not where you need to be, 
I want you to take a bold step today. Because to do business, you got to be bold. You got to be bold to do business. Are y'all hearing me? You got to make bold moves and bold steps in order to do business. So if that's you today and you say, no, I don't know. I haven't given my life to the Lord. I don't understand what that means. I want you to take a bold step today and say, I'm ready. I'm not going to hell. Ain't nobody ain't going to make me go to hell. But I'm getting ready to walk in my salvation power. If that's you, I want you to take a step on one, two, three. And I want you all to put your hands together and begin to praise God for every person that is not saved, even if you're backslidden. Come on. Come on. Put your hands together. Take a step. Take a step. Come on. Any unbelievers? Come on. Y'all know where you are in your salvation. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now listen to this. Do a road check. Ask the neighbor. You anchored in salvation? Ask them. Go down the road. Be the evangelist this morning. Ask people. Open your mouth and work your salvation. Show people you are saved by asking because Christ Jesus, the greatest commission, is that we are to go and witness Christ and save souls. That's the greatest wealth. Amen? Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. See that? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes you got to go fishing. And sometimes you got to bring your scuba gear. You got to go deep dive. Come on. you say amen praise God so before they take your name and your information come on let's repeat y'all put extended anybody else need to come before we close this out know where you are if you are backsliding if you're not where you need to be because not only do we want people to get saved we want people to recommit themselves to Christ that means I want to make a new confession of my salvation because I got to work some stuff out of me amen anybody else we good y'all ready to pray Let's pray with them. Lift up your hands, y'all. Come on, baby. You ain't got to be afraid. Come on, lift up your hands. Girl, you know God loves you. See, you ain't got to be afraid, honey. Your life getting ready to change forever. I was running just like that. You know, I didn't know. I was like, what? But God's getting ready to wipe those tears. Girl, you're going to have so much joy and so much peace because the Holy Ghost is about to step in your life, and he's about to turn everything around. And I just rebuke every spirit that have torment you. I come against every spirit that have abused you, neglect you, handled you wrong, treated you wrong. And Father, I thank you that today is her day of true deliverance. I uproot the pain in your heart, broken relationships, love that you look for in the wrong places. I uproot every place and thought of defeat. And Father, I cast the enemy out of her life. And I say today, as she make this bold commitment to come and serve you, she stepped out. Now, Father, will you meeting her where she is? And we thank you, Father, that this is the day of deliverance. This is her day of victory. And this is her greatest moment of turnaround. So we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Girl, you're about to mess up the devil. Stay right there. Don't go nowhere. Okay, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Lift up your hands. Come on, let's pray. The Bible tells us this. We must confess with our own mouth and believe in our own heart for salvation. And when we have now broke that covenant, you know, when you break a covenant, I was once married, I broke the covenant. You got to come back and let God reconcile you so that tear can be mended. And it puts you right back into your place. Nobody point fingers at nobody. Nobody look at nobody as if they're worse than anybody. We are one family. Say one. one. When we leave here today, I want y'all to hug them. I want y'all to love on them because they made a bold step. They walked out of their chair and said, I'm getting ready to get this right with Jesus because my life getting ready to change. Amen? Y'all ready? Lift up your hands. Say, Father, say today, I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me of every deed that I've done that was not pleasing to you. Say, forgive me for hurting others. Most of all, forgive me for hurting myself. Today, I choose by faith to believe you. Thank you for delivering me, for healing me, and setting me free. Today, I confess 
that I believe. And I set myself in right position with you. I make a decision to return to my first love, to love him beyond all other lovers. He is my first, my only, and my last. And I commit to you in Jesus' name. Now I want you all to pray. Come on, pray. Father, I seal them. I thank you for the blood over them. I seal all of them in the blood of Christ. And I thank you for your salvation that was done, that delivered them from every circumstance and situation. Woo! Set them free, Father. Make them whole. Set them free. Uproot, Father God, the spirit of depression. I break it off of you. I command heaviness and depression to go. That is not who you are. That is not where you will stay. And that is not what God says concerning you. And today I break the spirit of lack, of worry, and defeat. And I thank you, God, that she's an active participator in your word now to trust you, to believe you, and obey you. I break the spirit, Father God, in the name of Jesus, of resistance. And I say, Father God, no longer are they held captive of under any other thought or idea. Today they yield their mind. They make a decision in their hearts to let go and believe you. In Jesus' mighty name. We cover them, right? We cover them. We decree and declare it is so. And we thank you for anchoring them and keeping them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. They're going to get some information from you. Put your hands together. We got to get out of here. We got to take offering before we go. So I want all of you, give me that. We have communion too, Lord Jesus. We got to take announcements, communion. Okay, we're going to do this. Y'all going to do it with me? Okay, let's do it. We're going to, Miles, I love you. I just said your name, boy. Woo, give me hugs. I, I love you. I love y'all. I love y'all. Y'all make sure y'all love on them. Amen. Take them over. Y'all ready? So let's go ahead. Let's take communion, and we're going to sow our seed before we get out of here. We thank the Lord for what. Anybody got blessed today? Yes. Somebody say, I got victory. I'm getting ready to walk in my real purpose. Amen. And don't let people hold you to where you were yesterday because it's a new day. And tomorrow it's going to be better. Amen. Because I've already sent the word. Come on, stand to your feet. Communion is so important. And that's why he says as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of him. We don't take moments sometimes to just remember what he did for us. That's what salvation was about. You know, his body was broken and bruised. And so when we take part and we eat the, the, um, the bread, we are reminded through the brokenness of Christ and his body of the symbol of the wholeness and the oneness of him that when we partake in it, it transferred back to us the wholeness and the healing that Christ went on the cross to die for. Now we understand through covenant, we have a legitimate right back to be whole. And so when we eat it, we are reminded that he was broken, he was bruised for every broken issue in your life, for every bruised situation, that when I partake in it, I partake now in the resurrection of what he redeemed me from and what he brought me out of through salvation. So you take this bread. The Bible says as they took it, they held it. He began to now bless it. And when they blessed it, he broke it, and they began to eat it. They partook in fellowship and became one. I decree and declare that as you go into communion today, that whatever is in your body, whatever is not operating in your life to the order of your salvation, that as we take this today, we call everything back into alignment. We say we are one with Christ. We are participating in our covenant fellowship and in that agreement with what Christ did on the cross. Take the bread. Father, we bless it and we partake. We eat it. We eat in wholeness. We eat in oneness. We eat in our covenant blessing that was done on the cross. We thank you, Father, by your stripes. It was all conquered. We are healed. We are delivered. We are set free. Body be whole. In Jesus' name. At that same hour, they had juice. They took some wine, and it was, became a symbol because his blood was shed. Do you know you have victory in the blood? It was because of the blood that cleansed your blood. That's why sickness and disease can't live in you. And every time you do this, you're reminding every disease place, every sick place, everything that's trying to find itself in your blood to be diagnosed against you. When you partake, you say, no, nah, the blood did it. 
the blood did it. And so now we partake and we drink this together as a family to seal our covenant, to be reminded the blood did it. Take it and drink it. At the cross, we got salvation. We got victory. We were redeemed from everything that the enemy and the earth would try to hold against us. You are a believer in Jesus. You're born again. You are something to be reckoned with in the earth. Walk out of here knowing that today. Amen.